we will have a series of lectures on the derivation of stability derivatives. This mini lecture will be the first one of this series. It's about the uh, one of the lateral directional stability derivatives, and it's uh, called CM beta, which is a yaw moment change due to the side slip velocity. The first task is to define the side slip condition when we call the aircraft is in a side slip. Okay, so the definition is the airplane's longitudinal axis remains parallel to the original flight path, but the airplane no longer flies along that track. So in here we have a model aircraft, and uh, I uh, indicated the aircraft longitudinal axis, which is its original flight path. Now what happens is instead of following the original flight path, now it it uh, flies at a velocity of v. That's a and the actual path it it follows. Now we know what's called side slip condition, and uh, the second task is to define when it's positive side slip. Okay. So the positive side slip is defined when the relative wind is coming from the right of the nose of the airplane. So now we are showing the um, absolute motion of the aircraft, which is a vector v. And if we see the relative wind, we need to change the vector. So now we show the wind vector, so it's coming from the right of the nose of the airplane. So in this configuration, determines the positive side slip. The third task is uh, to define the side slip angle beta. It's kind of obvious, and the beta angle is between the aircraft longitudinal axis and the, the wind vector, relative wind vector, and it's indicated in here. And side slip angle is, is essentially the directional angle of attack of the airplane. It is a primary parameter in directional stability considerations. And there's uh, one final quantity, which is uh, side slip velocity. And under a positive side slip, we will have positive side slip velocity as indicated in here. We already know the definition of aircraft side slip. The task now is to derive the stability derivative CM beta or CMV. First of all, let's do some force in a moment analysis on this craft aircraft and we are using this sketch again which follows the positive side slip. Okay. And we know the beta is actually the angle of attack acting on the fin. So there should be a side force acting on the fin which is indicated by big LF. And we already know the distance between the aerodynamic center of the fin and the center of gra gravity of the aircraft, which is a small LF. And then the side force LF will give a produce a moment, positive yawing moment, big N. Okay, so that's analysis of the force and the moment. Now we need to derive. How can we write down LF and N? Okay, so the LF is uh, side lift on the fin. We can write down this way. And we know alpha F is the slope of fin lift coefficient curve. Alpha F times beta only gives you the lift coefficient. Since big LF is uh, dimensional and we, we need to times half rho V square times SF to get the dimensional side force and then the side force times uh, its arm will produce the uh, yawing moment big n 
OK. So in the big N, we have a beta. How can we replace the beta? We know uh, in that triangle formed by small v and a big V, and we can find sine beta equals small v divided by big V using the uh, triangle geometries. And we know in here we assume beta is a small angle. If it is small angle, we know beta can be roughly uh, equal to small v divided by big V. So in here, we introduce what actually is, is a small disturbance assumption. We assume beta is a small value, small angle. Okay, so we have the beta now and we just plug it in and then do some simplification. We get the uh, yawing moment produced by the side force. Okay, I'm pasting it in here again to, to do some follow-up analysis. Now we need to calculate the derivative, so partial n partial way. And it's actually we just divided the v from n, we get this relation. And since we are interested in, a, in its non-dimensional form, and now we need to look at the table, right? The table from the previous lecture, how to determine the denominator. So that if we look at the table, the denominator would be half rho v s b because it is the moment with respect to linear velocity. So eventually we do some simplification, we can have alpha f times sf lf divided by sb. And we can notice sf times lf, it actually has a dimension of a volume, right? So above the, above the bar, it's a volume of the fin, below the bar is a volume of the vin. And we can make it in, write down in a uh, easier way, so we can call it cn beta or cn v equals alpha f times vf, and the vf uh, equals uh, that part, and we call vf is a fin volume. Actually, it's a relative, it's a ratio between the volume of the fin and the volume of the wing. Okay, so now we have the answer. So we fi uh, we finish the derivation. Is that right? Just now we finished the derivation of CM beta or CMV. And actually in, in practice, we usually use CM beta, although uh, in the derivation, uh, we, we see that it's based on a uh, moment change with respect to linear velocity. But in practice, we use CM beta instead of using CMV. So um, they are actually the same thing. Okay, so based on the uh, derived uh, relation, we can find the lateral stability derivative. Cm beta is a, a linear function of the fin volume, Vf. And secondly, a larger fin will obviously give a greater response to a yawing disturbance because if you have a larger fin and then the Vf is larger, Okay, so it's based on the assumption that the wing is the same. You have the same wing, right? So you have, if you have a larger fin, and apparently this same beta will be larger, and under the same, which means under the same uh, side slip angle, it will produce a larger yawing moment. So that's the interpretation. And now, now let's see some typical values of same beta. And we can see, and we have different types of aircraft from very big aircraft, which is a Boeing 747. And also we have very small aircraft, which is a PPA uh, Cherokee. Okay, we can see the actually all those CM beta values, despite the different sizes of the aircraft, they are quite similar and they are in a similar range magnitude. And this is a benefit, the non-dimensional derivative give us, although the Boeing 747, the dimensional n beta would be very big, huge in comparison to the PPA Cherokee. But if we do the non-dimensional one, evaluate the non-dimensional one, all those 
big values are brought to the same level. So this helps with some uh, the flight dynamics analysis. This, yeah. Okay. So now the question is: Did you notice all these same beta for different aircrafts have positive value? Why is that? I give you a few seconds to consider. Okay, now let's say if we are in a, for example, we are in a positive side slip, and then what it gives is the aircraft you are moving sideways along positive y-axis. That's what we've shown in our sketch, right? And follow up is this positive side slip will generate positive yawing moment, which means the aircraft knows to the right. So the nose will move to the right. So that's why the C1 beta is always positive. Now it's the end of this lecture. So in this lecture, we derived the C and beta and uh, did some analysis and also discussion. And in the next lectures, we will derive other um, non-dimensional stability derivatives.